Well, hello, everyone. I'm your host, Sheila Seppi, and I want to thank you and welcome you for being with us, whether you're in our live audience or if you're watching us on the Conscious Awakening Network live or on replay. Thank you so much for being with us, and I honor your presence. Thanks. So now during the month of June, my co-host is my beloved friend, Michelle Anderson. Now, Michelle is a conscious collaborator. She's an MC. She's an international speaker, and she's an event organizer and co-host of Awakening Code Radio. Now, at this very moment, she is still at Contact in the Desert and has been participating in meetings to hear what Richard Dolan, Daniel Sheehan, Linda Moulton Howe, among others, have to say about the bombshell announcement today from the U.S. military whistleblower David Grush, who claims that the U.S. military has a non-human origins craft and that they have this program that they have been keeping secret from us for many many years they have found a number of fully intact ufos or uaps and in fact they're all of non-human origins and that the government has a sophisticated disinformation campaign targeting the U.S. populace. Now, you know, for most of us, this really is not breaking news. It's simply confirmation of what we've known and experienced for years, but now it's becoming public. So this is a major, major step towards full disclosure. So, Michelle, before you announce our special guest, Jennifer Berry Hill, who is part of the Sunfire Festival, which is a galactically inspired event, can you tell us just a little bit about your meetings? Well, first, I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself, and then I want you to tell us a little bit about the meetings you've been participating in today. Holy smokes, it's been Hey, it's honey. Been it's been incredible here. I just want to say thank you so much for having me on to be your host in June and for, for trusting in my intuition as far as what this month holds for us. Um, we are in a heightened state of get ready, let's go now. <laughs> you know, there's so much happening with our galactic families. There's so much happening on earth right now that I believe is tasking us to really hold each other's hands and keep our hearts open to what's coming forward so that we can be the calm in the face of some of the some of the chaos that's that's rocking the boat right now. So um, I'm what Sheila said was I'm still here in the desert at Contact in the Desert. I don't know if you can see my badge here. Contact in the Desert. Um, this is the ninth year that we have, uh, that I've been a part of Contact in the Desert. They were dark for about three or four years, um, three years, I guess. And it, it, it has been an epic journey since Thursday. Eric Rankin, my, my partner in Shine over at um, Awakening Code Radio, he led the, the giant rock tour. We both led the giant rock tour and took people out to the Integratron. And we, we kicked off this event because it really started uh, on Friday. And Thursday, we got to give people a, a super fun experiential with a lot of information. So that was incredible. And the speakers have been epic. This is the first year that Captain Ron has taken over the production of Contact in the Desert. He now is, is a co-owner of Contact in the Desert and that brand. And there is a really harmonious vibe going on here. And what I wanna talk about this month, and that is why I chose this beautiful being that you're seeing here, Jennifer Berryhill. Jen Berryhill is the producer of Sunfire Fest. And she used to work with Chief Golden Light Eagle on all the 1111 Star Knowledge conferences. And she did many, many productions with him. And she is endeavoring to do Sunfire Fest this August. And we'll have her tell you a little bit more about what's in store there. But the reason why I jumped in and said yes to Jennifer and why I jumped in and said yes to Sheila Seppi is because both of these women really model and embody this trait that I believe will get us through these times. And what that trait is, is conscious collaboration without competition for the upliftment of 
all life upon earth, for all of humanity and all, all species upon earth. These are the times and we are the ones. And I believe that anybody who tunes in to this broadcast, who is here with us right now, you are all co-creators and collaborators of the best kind because we are ushering in a new age. And most of us that are here, I believe are very heart centered. We, I tend to say, I think with my heart, I'm, I'm just thrilled that Sheila and Jennifer are joining hands by disseminating this information and listening to our indigenous families because Sunfire Fest is really it, it's it's a galactic inspired event, but it's also an indigenous infused event. And my feeling is that it's a ceremony disguised as a fest festival. And what I mean by that is it's not just for us to play and have fun, which is so important to, to moving forward, um, but it's also there, there's there's some rich teachings that are going to happen there. And I would like to welcome Jennifer Berryhill to share a lot more about that. So thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Jennifer. And thank you to everyone here. Wow. Well, good evening, everyone. It's such an amazing pleasure to be here with you all tonight with so many things going on that are just mind blowing, exciting. Um, you know, we were, Michelle and I were talking the other day just about how we feel like we're in the blender right now and it's on high. <laughs> I don't know how you all feel right now, but um, I don't know, I'm kind of mixed with some excitement, a little bit of anxiety just because it feels like so much is going on. Um, but all in all, I'm just really happy to be here. I really appreciate the, appreciate the opportunity to be with you all tonight to share about Sunfire Fest. Thank you, Michelle, for the glorious introduction and for all the work that you're doing and all the space that you hold for everybody. You know, you're you're doing so much on so many levels and you just continue to shine and oh, send out so much love, which we all need. So thank you so much. <laughs> um, so yeah, just a little bit about my background. Michelle mentioned that I have worked closely with a beautiful being named Chief Golden Light Eagle. He is, um, his American name is Lauren Zephyr, but um, he started his mission in 1996 with creating a gathering that he called the Star Knowledge Conference. And his mission and the purpose for, for his gatherings was to bring forth information relating to the universal and spiritual laws of creation. And what that means is that there's these symbols that are part of our DNA that um, exist as a way for us to um, activate our remembrances and to really anchor more light on this planet. And so he carried that mission forward for over 25 years. I had the amazing honor and pleasure of working with him for about eight years before he passed away in 2021. And so with his transition, I, I found myself in a bit of a transition myself with how to continue the legacy that was instilled in me um, because I made the decision to carry those teachings forward with his permission. And um, it just, it needed to be brought in a way that was still really honoring of him, but um, was giving an opportunity for a, a new fresh outlook and a new um, ability to really anchor in something for our future. So right now, you know, we're all in this blender of realization where it feels like the past, the present, and the future are really all one. And so what I bring is a little bit more of that futuristic aspect combined with the ancient teachings to be what we can use for the present moment to create massive and powerful change for beauty in our future. And so that was really um, how Sunfire Festival came to be. And a big part of the teachings that are shared in the Universal and Spiritual Laws of Creation, um, there's a, a specific symbol and teaching that work with the five arts of harmony. 
And the five arts of harmony are the music, the dance, the natural medicines, the um, agriculture, you know, working with the land in a sustainable way, as well as astrology. And we're kind of tying all these arts together with, as Michelle said, a beautiful ceremony. And so Sunfire Fest is happening in August in Aztec, New Mexico, which is just south of Durango, Colorado in the Four Corners area at a beautiful place called Tico Time Resort. And this amazing resort, it offers so many fun amenities because it's right on the Animas River which butts up against this beautiful mountain. So it's like where the mountains and the beach kind of meet with the water. And so this is our opportunity to really anchor in something so much better that we all know is within our birthright. And we're getting an opportunity to do this on the earth and under the sun, the moon and the stars working with the elements. We're gonna have sacred fire. We have a beautiful ancestral village that's gonna be a big part of those ancient teachings that we're, you know, we're trying to keep alive. So much of the wisdom is, is dying off, literally, because we are, we're losing a lot of our elders. And so that's part of my mission is really to help keep the legacy alive of what Chief Golden White Eagle worked so hard to bring forward to humanity for over 25 years. And he would bring in a lot of the indigenous elders from around the world, really, to come and share their wisdom and teach us their medicine ways and teach us their ceremonial ways and teach us how to be in right relationship with each other and with the earth and with all who dwell upon her road. And really, you know, focusing on what can we do to make this place sustainable for our children for the next seven generations and beyond and beyond and beyond and you know we're we're in such a pivotal moment of time where these doors are open for us to do this really incredible work you know and coming together we have the opportunity to create miracles where two or more gather we can shift so many things and so, and, you know, just getting the opportunity to be in each other's presence in circle and, you know, sitting heart to heart, hand to hand, looking each other in the eyes and, and recognizing each other, remembering each other. We know each other and we all hold codes and keys and aspects and pieces to the greater reality that when we all come together can really click into place and shift and formulate a new reality. So I'll stop there, Michelle. Did you wanna pop in and share more? I love what you shared, Jennifer, and what I feel is happening right now, especially today. I, I'd like to ask if, you know, how, how you felt when you heard the news about disclosure today, because this is a big part of the work that Chief was doing that we've all been doing as far as educating people about our cosmic family. Everybody here has been doing that. Everybody here is aware of our galactic origins and that's what drew us here. But, you know, mainstream it, it isn't always aware of that. And we've been looking for our government to admit to this disclosure. And today was a big day and everyone here is very buzzy about it and where there's lots of, I mean, everybody's pivoting and coming in and talking about now what do we do because now is a very important time on how we move forward now that the government admitted this part and there's some poignant pieces in here but what Jen is bringing up is is a very important message that that chief carried in his heart it was his it was his mission and what he did was really inspired people to get in touch and in tune with our galactic her heritage. And he was so inclusive. It's it's everybody's, everybody's involved. There's no hierarchy. And that's what's really important to what I feel is the turning point in the in the consciousness arena and in the disclosure arena is that it's time for all of us to heal the divide and move forward with our galactic family, but we have to integrate that peace and harmonious feeling here on earth. 
so that our galactic family can accept us, the the, the humans, um, in, into their family. And we're working on integrating that. And so I feel that these conferences and festivals are pivotal in the evolution of our species. And we're seeing it. So, you know, I'm just wondering, Sheila, Jen, like, like we talked about, we felt like we were in the blender, but do you also feel like we, we just took a quantum leap into the future by what happened today? I'd really like to kind of discuss the merging of the indigenous teachings, the beginning of where we all started, the indigenous teachings that teach us about our star family and incorporate that with where we are here, where we're moving into this area that feels a little bit um, crunchy with the discussion of where AI is going and what's happening in our government. And many people here don't trust our government at all. And so what is our role as responsible citizens in how we move forward during this time? Personally, I believe it. it the keys lie in us gathering together in person. I love the Zoom. I love I love that we're here and we're able to dialogue with each other through this computer. I also feel it's very, very, very important that we have these in-person gatherings where we have the drummers, the, the Sundance singers and dancers singing and dancing and praying. Those, those songs are prayers. And I feel that's the way that we're going to also help bring forward. So I'm curious how, how you feel about that, Sheila. And, and, yeah. Well, there's a couple thoughts. First, I feel like we've really gone full circle because the indigenous peoples all talk about being from the stars. And today what we're talking about is embracing our star families who have been making their presence known to us for a long time. And now it's, it's kind of ironic that we're just now being able to publicly talk about that, that um, the government is acknowledging that and even though they've known it forever. But I believe that the indigenous teachings um, are so important for all of us. You know, when I uh, came in as a walk-in in 1999, the thing that really anchored me on this planet was my shamanic walk and learning how to drop in and ground in to the teachings of the people and learning how to ground into Mother Earth, how to work with the four directions, how to call that energy, you know, into my life and how to be able to utilize that. And I think that now it is, hey, Alan, I think now is a great time time that we can all begin to put these indigenous teachings in practice. And uh, Jen, that's one reason why I was so excited that you were going to be here with us tonight. And it seems like what you're doing with Sunfire is really, really bringing, you know, to life these teachings and helping to, um, you know, bring everything back to life because the indigenous people up until 1986 were not even allowed to practice their own ceremonies, you know, which I find ludicrous. However, you know, now they can. And so getting this information out to people, I think is one of the most paramount things that can happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So what are your thoughts, Jen? <laughs> okay. So, you know, one of the amazing things that anybody that worked with Chief Golden Light Eagle and knew him, um, he was just, he embraced everybody. And what he did, he carried what he called an all nations altar. So anybody that wanted, that felt the call in their heart to be part of ceremony and connect with the teachings was welcome. There's, there was no boundaries around race, color, you know, culture, you know, it, all of that was just, you know, not a thing for him. And so that's why it was so great for me because I was able to step onto the altar with him and get to do a lot of ceremony, ceremony with him and learn indigenous ways um, to, to help continue the work that he was doing because not one person can carry this load and it's a big one and he he was this humongous beacon of light that came on to share these teachings because we need it humanity needs these teachings 
And there is a force that doesn't want us to have it. You know, we all know that all these secrets and things that are being kept and hidden, you know, it is all supposed to be free. I mean, we're a free will planet, but why are we being suppressed and in, in this information withheld? And so, you know, it, it was a, a an interesting dance sometimes because a lot of things can come up, you know, when you're trying to shed a lot of light in a big dark world sometimes. And so he he did that. And so one of the things that that came up when you're with your question, Michelle, was what what came up for me around finding out about this release of information today. It's incredibly exciting. And for one reason is that, you know, in the teachings that Chief shared with us, you know, it's it's about working in a more natural way. And so he worked with the moon cycles. He worked with ceremony with the sun. He worked very closely with many star nations. And this particular moon cycle right now is what we would be calling the tree moon. And the tree moon in star knowledge works in the stargate of truth. And so we're seeing the stargate opening up and the veil is completely ripping off. Disclosure is coming out. The truth is coming out. And it's coming out in the collective. It's coming out within ourselves, too. I mean, we're kind of in a space now where we can't lie to ourselves anymore. We can't be out of integrity anymore. If we, if we try and pretend to be or do something, you know, we're going to feel a massive efforting and exhaustion by trying to, to hold on to false illusion and mass. And so I'm kind of talking a little bit about shadow here. So it's really important that even though this information is coming out and it's really exciting to also tether it with the awareness that we still can't externalize our power into something outside of us. And so, yay, we have the help coming. It's here. And, you know, we have to remember our power and not to give that away to another thing that's going to save the day. Because at the end of the day, it's still up to me. It's up to you. It's up to us. And, I mean, we are the inhabitants on this earth for a reason. And yay, we called in for the help and they're here, but let's not forget that we also have a strong purpose and mission that we're here to fulfill. And I guarantee you, the star beings that are coming are looking to us to also learn about what's going on and how to help. And so I love being in this conversation. So I'll say that much. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Okay, Michelle, what's going on in your head? Well, there's so much going on in my head after being in this in this room where I don't know if anyone here is aware of the work that Daniel Sheehan has been doing in the world. Um, God, I, I I don't have his bio in front of me, but he was he has been instrumental as an attorney a trial attorney in making great strides in many areas of environmentalism and um, in the nuclear industry. He, he, he won the case for, um, why is her name escaping me? Um, the Silkwood case. If you remember that, that movie about Karen Silkwood, that was a, a a true, a movie based on, on truth. And it was a woman about a woman who was killed because of what she knew being a whistleblower about what was happening in the nuclear industry. And our star family, much of the talk here this week, there's been so much talk here about so many different areas of, um, you know, the scientific side of, of uh, disclosure and our star family. But there's also been a lot of heart-based um, talk as well. And Jen, you really bring it back to our hearts. And you know, our responsibility as good stewards of the earth. And I feel like that's such an, an important component of this. Um, but what I love seeing that Danny Sheehan did was he saw what happened. Can I first back up and ask either one of you, did you know about this disclosure before I sent you the information or so? 
No, I was at the zoo with my granddaughter. <laughs> so this whistleblower came through, this case broke. And what I'd like to share, and somebody may want to type it in the comments. I can barely see the comments because I'm not wearing glasses right now. But Elizabeth Vargas on News Nation. So you can go to newsnationnow.com for the exclusive interview that talked um you know, with this uh, high, high level whistleblower that came forward. He's a military guy, David Grush. And thank you so much, Sheila, for giving that that great overview about what happened, because my head is so full of so much information about this that I didn't think I'd be able to do it. And I didn't have time to write it up. I, I tried to take some notes, but there were some really forthright statements that came through and then it, this is real about this crash. But one of the things they're talking about here is where we go from here, because what we've seen happening over many, many years with uh, as far as the way the government gives us information is a lot of times there's a little snippet that goes out, but then the rest doesn't follow, right? So they're not talking about um, contact with us. They're talking about a crash. They're not talking about the bodies that get recovered in the crashes. And there's for years and years and years, there's been um, many, many witnesses, many eye eyewitness accounts. And that's probably why a lot of people are here because you're having communication with these multidimensional beings and these different star beings. And so they're not really talking about that. They're just talking about a non-human crash. They're not talking about any other life forms or races. So one of the things that's, you know, the topic here is how we want to make sure we get a good message out there. This is, I, I took, I did, I was trying to type notes while Danny Sheehan sitting in the front row, you know, trying to type notes of what he's saying, because I ducked out of there to come on, on this call. It was still going on. It's still going on now. But he said, I, we want to make sure we get a good message out there. And Rich, Richard Dolan said, disclosure is is the beginning for the whole new fight for truth. And so, so that I think is, is really important that we keep that in mind as we move forward as, you know, working on our own sovereignty and, and um, our desire for peace on earth and for all of us to be the full disclosure. And I, I really can't, thank all of you enough for being here and adding your heart presence to, to what we want to co-create this month. We really want to focus on how the indigenous, our indigenous families are the people that brought us the teachings from the stars. And we really want to unpack and honor the whole, the whole process of what that looks like. We, we feel that healing takes place once we are able to heal some of the past traumas of our human race, we can move forward and take this, you know, our place within the, the galactic society. But I, a lot of times we've been mired down with our own karmic cycles that have been happening. So Sunfire Fest, as Jen explained to you, feels like it is a a ramp, a bridge to doing a lot of that work by having, Jen, did you talk about the fire keepers and the fire ceremony? Did you go through the, you know, a little overview about what's going to take place at Sunfire Fest? I don't, I mean, we're not here to just be a commercial about Sunfire Fest. We're here to talk about our indigenous family, but I think it's important to at, at least touch base on the different components of this festival and why we're feeling it so strongly in our hearts now, because we're um, building momentum through each one of these conferences and bringing it out to nature at Sunfire Fest. So we had Conscious Life Expo in February where Sheila and I did some co-hosting together there with some really great people. And then we had Portal to Ascension where, where we were again in person, a lot of people in person. And I feel that it's, it's, it's expanding this force field of light. It's amplifying and you're all a part of that. Everybody on this call is a part of it, whether you were with us in person or not. By being here now, we're feeling that we're, our energies are flowing. And so now after this event, contact in the desert where there's, you know, 
few thousand people here. Then we're, we want to bring this and anchor more in, in nature and learn from our Indigenous family, listen with deep respect to our Indigenous family, and work on healing some of that trauma to move forward and be able to celebrate and be in joy with the music that's there. So Jenna, I would like to kick it back over to you to talk a little bit about that part, because that's coming through right now as I'm, as I'm feeling into the way that this call is going. And I, I really want to anchor that in and make sure we get that point across. Um, can you, oh, okay. <laughs> So what was coming through really strongly when I was tuning into your question is um, there's something really magical that's happening that I fully haven't even been able to integrate in yet um, because this is such a big, powerful gathering that's like really formulating through a co-created process. And there's a really big significance with the sun. And many cultures, many indigenous groups and tribes all over the world have celebrated and acknowledged and worked with the sun. And so it's really important, I think, that we know how much is coming through from the sun to aid humanity right now, to aid the elevation of the frequency of Mother Earth. So there's these codes that come in and they, um, they come in from the sun and they come into the earth and then they come into us and we actually are conduits for anchoring that energy into the earth. And so there's a kind of a symbiotic relationship going on there where we're all ascending together as well as you know helping mother earth ascend herself and so that was a piece that i felt like i needed to share because you know the sun is a big piece of what we're going to be really um, embracing and and working with is the energy of the sun which you know carries through many different cultures and so at sunfire fest we're creating ancestral village and within that, we're going to be having sacred fire burning for four days. It's going to be a ceremony the entire time with that we are there. And we have very, very special dedicated fire keepers that do this regularly. Like this is their life. This is their medicine is working with the fire. They're, they're coming and they're, they're building this sacred fire. And, you know, once we gather and we're there, it's an opportunity to transmute and purify through the sun, through the fire, and through just collaborating and, and acknowledging or even just sharing some of what might be coming up for us. You know, this is an opportunity to clear generational and cultural trauma that was already brought into the space as something that people are ready for. And so there's some elders that live on the reservation there on the Ute and Navajo and Dene, those tribes, um, we have elders coming. Nathan Strong Elk is a Ute um, tribal member and a Sundance chief and medicine man. He's excited, he's coming. He's gonna be doing our opening ceremony for Sunfire Fest and singing his songs and talking about his medicine. And so, um, you know, we're doing everything we can to honor the, the land and those that dwell in that, on that land, in that area, because they're the ones that hold the information for what's on there. It's in their blood, it's in their DNA. And they're, they're actually excited to share that with us. And so what a treat, what an opportunity. And so um, we've got some other grandmothers coming. Um, some folks that have been with Chief Golden Light Eagle for a very, very long time, grandmothers that are coming to share their wisdom um, around what is the star knowledge? How do these symbols work? You know, how can we work with these symbols of creation? And one thing that's also interesting that I can tie into what the disclosure have, you know, is for today is that the symbols that we work with in star knowledge, they're called the 1111 symbols. And 
these symbols were actually found on crashed um, you know, crafts that were crashed. <laughs> so these symbols were found almost like on like an informational panel that um, you know they found on these crafts that had they found in Roswell, they found in Socorro, um, they found in um, lots of different areas, Dulce. Um, and so there's there's this discovery that there's a connection with these symbols and our star nations and, and how these symbols really are tools for everyone to use. And they actually open doorways to, to gain access to higher dimensions, to bring in more light for the benefit of all. And so these are just small aspects of what we call star knowledge that'll be part of Sunfire Fest, but it also, it, it, it's a little more um, diverse because we have an opportunity to learn from the Navajo, to learn from the Ute, to learn from the Pueblo, to learn from the Diné. Um, and they all have their own creation stories. They all have their own ceremonies. They all work with the elements. And um, I'm really excited for that aspect to work with the water and the fire, the air and the earth, and, and really see, you know, bridge that connection, that reconnection back into the natural sense of who we are, but also recognizing how galactic we really are. <laughs> so it's going to be a lot of fun, and we'll see how it unfolds. Can you also share the dates? So if people are interested in attending, Absolutely. Um, so it's going to be in August. So it's August 25th through the 28th of 2023. It's our inaugural event and it's in Aztec, New Mexico, which is about 20 minutes south of Durango, um, which is in the Four Corners area. And we have a website. It's sunfirefest.com. You can find out all the information about um, the lineup and the music that's coming. Um, we have, you know, Larissa Stowe with Shakti Tribe coming. We have a native-led rock band, blues band named Ghost Dog that's coming to perform. We also have a lot of quantum healers that are coming to share um, wisdom around um, quantum healing, as well as, you know, star knowledge teachings and lots of just, you know, time to integrate. Because I find that over the years, in conferences, you, you get so much information and it's like back to back to back to back to back, one to the next to the next to the next without any time in between to, to really ingest and, and integrate the wisdom that's landing within your field. And so that's why I love the aspect of the music being an opportunity to just stop and, you know, really allow that to for, you know, the frequencies to stabilize within our systems with the wisdom that we, we listen to. And, um, you know, we have the dance and so moving the body and really, you know, feeling that infusion into ourselves. And so that we can, when we leave, the idea is that we can take that forward with us into the world. And then we become a seed and we're spreading our pollen so that it touches everybody else that we see after the event and really creating that ripple effect for the deep healing and the deep awakening that we all desire. Mm, that's beautiful, beautiful. You know, as you were talking about this and connecting in with those four elements, it reminds me of um, a time when I was doing uh, Native American teachings for children and there was a song that they had about earth's my body, water's my blood, fires my breath or sorry airs my breath and fires my spirit and that is so true if we all think about that and we just kind of drink that in and being able to participate in an event like this and being able to anchor those indigenous truths I think is so powerful and I you know this is like the purification rites um, absolutely. It's all about the purification and, you know, bringing our heart into balance, which, of course, the indigenous talk about the four chamber hearts. So it's like clearing out each of those aspects of us and being able to come into the fullness of our spirit and grounding ourselves. So thank you so much for this powerful work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sheila. Yeah. 
So Michelle, are you going to be there too? I'm absolutely going to be there. Great. And I wanna, since I have my my one of my very best friends, Maura Hoffman here, she's one of the hosts at Contact in the Desert. She's been a host every all nine years. She's also a host at uh, Conscious Life Expo, Burning Man, Bhakti Fest. Bhakti Fest. Bhakti Fest. Bhakti Fest. Yeah. Lightning. She, I used to do lightning in a bottle once upon a time. She, she's the hostess with the mostest, and she's one of the great connectors of all times and a, totally a conscious collaborator. Absolutely. She's got her little baby Bodhi Rose here. And, um, you know, we're one of the things that I wish that Maura could be at Sunfire Fest with us. But one of the other things going on at that time is this festival called Burning Man. So feeling into one of the things that I think is is something that we we could be um, invited to look at in terms of how different festivals hold different frequencies, but every one of them is important to this great shift of the ages. Every one of them has a different vibrational signature to them, but they're all important. And the reason why they're all important as the indigenous new and teach us is our prayers are as strong as the feeling that goes with them so if we're praying our father blah, 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 we're just saying a bunch of words the prayer i would i would venture to say my personal belief would be it's it's not as strong when it's just a string of words without the feeling behind it. And I think Greg Braden talks a lot about that, doesn't he? He does a whole series on that, on praying with feeling. But what, what our First Nation people, our Indigenous family have taught us is that when, when the prayers are, are done in community, dancing with your feet connecting with the earth and with the music and that heartbeat of our our drumming which is the heartbeat of the mother and us dancing and singing and chanting together that is a direct line into our creator into the universe into all of us coming together to hold that intention and that vision for moving forward and Maura, I don't know if you want to say a few things about some of the, the things they talked about here with disclosure and maybe our role in it and what we can think about holding, whether you come to Sunfire Fest or you go to a dip Burning Man or whatever. One of the takeaways from what they were talking about today, Richard Dolan and Danny Sheehan, and there was so much harmony going on. And that's what I was going to say. What I've loved about this weekend is they've talked a lot about harmony and unity. And even with some of the discussions on AI, the uni unity aspect that it, it's all about our perspective, that it could be used for good. How about downloading the Vedas and all these beautiful sacred texts to let that guide it? And with Burning Man, one year our camp, there are spiritual camps that focus on yoga, meditation, and they brought in power of prayer and a lot of the indigenous from Standing Rock. We had a whole beautiful collective there of, of honoring that to help. And the whole Burning Man group was super supportive mm -hmm. to bring in, you know, that level of sacredness and honoring for Indigenous elders and for that whole community. And as far as what's happening here with that same level of oneness and we are all connected, you know, they said with disclosure, what, what's happening is now stuff will start to open. And it's going to open people's hearts. And they said, it's also good to give it in little bits. That was the last little part I heard was that, you know, just it's a start. It's an opening to start opening people's minds as to what's possible, as to what else is out there that we might not know about. And that's that's the exciting part for me. We're on a Zoom, We're on a Zoom, call. Zoom call. Sorry. And this is Bodhi. She's very popular. And even here, just people can walk up and talk where it's such a friendly atmosphere that everybody feels like family. And I know that's what you all have at Sunfire. Larissa Stowe is a really dear friend of both of us. She lives with Larissa Stowe and that Larissa Stowe and Shakti tribe will be uh, performing at Sunfire Fest. And she, she just put out a post Larissa today. On, did she? Yeah, she just posted today a beautiful picture on Facebook and about that they'll be at Sunfire inviting people. 
And it was so fun for me to see that sitting next to you. Mm -hmm. And y'all, I would love to come to Sunfire. I just don't know how to do all of it, you know? I'm, I'm doing my best to activate my wings and learn how to buy locate. And um, I, I'm a big support for some of the other people that are there and setting up some of the beautiful camps. And you never know. So as far as today, just to know that there's been a whistleblower and you all have heard but they're putting it out there. And what Danny Sheehan and Richard Dolan spoke about, Danny Sheehan's background in law, did you already talk about him? Just a teeny bit. You probably know a lot more about Well, him. just the essence, Danny and his wife were the forefront of the Iran-Contra of helping stop nuclear because of the Silkwood case. They tried the Silkwood case and got the hugest amount for their family. So there are people that are making a difference and they have the Romero Institute, which is all about putting out information and helping people become aware. And, and I do wanna give that a plug since we're talking about conscious collaboration as well. Danny Sheehan, he's an amazing activist. And so his website for um, what he's doing is called Romero, R-O-M-E-R-O -E institute.org. And then he said forward slash, New Paradigm Reports will give us a little more information, I think, about what, how we're moving forward with this, this disclosure and how each one of us takes it in our, in our hearts and, and what we do with it as we move forward as a collective is really important. And most importantly, to do so with love, with joy, with enthusiasm, but it's not- And discernment. A, discernment, yeah. but not about fear. It's actually about new possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. And new paradigms. Yeah. Thank you. And the sunfire. <laughs> love you all. I love you. Mwah. Thank you. Isn't she the best? <laughs> and hi, Jen. It's, 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 you know, I, uh, I apologize if it's not a, um, being here in this little, I found a little cubby hole that I came in and it's right, right on the other side is this big, huge conference hall that everybody's in and the, the door keeps opening and shutting and people are walking by and they all want to talk to me and hand me back things they borrowed from me and they're all going for the day. But <laughs> it was really important to me. I didn't want to I didn't want to not be here, you know, and so Maura was so generous to help me find a place to set up my computer and she helped me get all that's what she does she's like the queen of fairies. So, um, it was really important for me to show up, you know, because we committed to this call and kicking off our month of June Mondays uh, Jennifer is helping me populate these Mondays with some of our our speakers that are at sunfire and that have. Um, that have tapped into these indigenous teachings. And one of the people that was here at Contact in the Desert, she was also at Conscious Life Expo, is Sarah Brexme Cos Cosme. Do, do any of you, can you, If well, I don't see a bunch of people with their cameras on, but if you know of this woman, do you, can you, I see a couple of hands going up maybe. Um, she's a dynamic speaker, and she speaks a lot about Atlantis through her QHHT practice in doing regressions, but she also wrote another book that talks about some of her regressions taking her to the Trail of Tears. So that's what really uh, inspired me to make a theme of our June month. You know, last time I was on with you, Sheila, maybe the time before last was when we did February, and we made it about love, right? Right. Right. So this time we wanted to make it about our indigenous family, our First Nation people that are really holding a very pivotal part in this this next phase of our evolutionary process and how we can play a role in that. So what do you remember the date that I gave you that she committed to? I it's don't not, right it, off. No, I don't think it's next Monday, but it might be the Monday after that for our, our cosmic awakening. Um conversations that Sarah will be on with us too. And Jen helped per procure her being a speaker at um, at Sunfire Fest. She'll be on on the 19th. She committed to the 19th. Jen, did, do you know if we have people already coming back for the, the Monday Cosmic Conversations on the 12th? Is, is Teresa Stone and, and Delia and Crystal coming on? Um, 
I think so. Yeah, I'll have to tune in and, and figure that out for sure. Yeah, we we want to try to get, and I'll see if I can get Larissa Stowe back on. If you if you want Larissa Stowe back on, uh, absolutely, I yes. love her. Yeah, she's, she's got a really great vibe when she sings, and she helps bring us all into our hearts. And so it's really exciting to know that we're doing all of this collaborating. And and you know another piece of this that I just like to touch on briefly is another theme that's coming up lately is more of this rising of the divine feminine and stepping into a more balanced role in how we move forward with being, you know, the nurturing side of things and the receptive side of things. And a lot of women actually integrating a more masculine essence that gives us a more empowered state of being and using our voices more. And I just noticed through preparing for this call tonight with, with Jen and I and Sheila, with, with all the times we've been together, that each time we're coming together on these calls, it's feeling more and more to me like we're doing something really big for the collective by each one of us really embracing a more balanced feminine and masculine weaving of our energies within our own bodies. And I'm feeling it myself. I've probably admitted to, to some of you, if you've been on the calls before when I've been on with Sheila or Jen, when I've been on with you, how, you know, I there are times that I share that it has not always been easy for me to be in front of the camera or to use my voice. And then I get really, really nervous. And some of my, my indigenous friends that um, I've done some work with have talked about many women that are on the earth today, that are walking the earth today, have past life, maybe trauma in our systems um, around the suppression of our voices. And when I learned that through a man named Rainbow Thunderheart, uh, Bavado, his, his name was um, Benny LeBeau, and he went by Rainbow Thunderheart. And and he was a Shoshone wisdom keeper and a medicine man, uh, a medicine wheel um, ceremonialist to help with many, many things, especially uh, the regulation of bringing back waters to areas with droughts and things like this and doing it through medicine wheel ceremonies. But I was at a, a gathering with him and when he shared that many of us women were just sobbing when he shared that he was calling for the men to hold the space for, for women to come forward and start using our voices and, and get, getting more active and activated. So what I see here with this collaboration is, is Sheila stepping into that role and bringing us, look at what she's doing for each one of us here with this network and making sure she's disseminating. There's, you're, she's bringing you so many people that, that are you know collaborating together to share their, their knowledge and the things that are coming through. And each one of you are sharing your art, your poetry, your music, and what's coming through for you. We're having these cosmic conversations where there's no hierarchy. We're here to, we're here to do this together. And, and when Jen came to me with this idea for Sunfire Fest, you know, I, I don't know if I can use some of the words that I said to her, but I was like, good for you. You're being a badass. I'm really, really <laughs> happy to see you standing in your power and, and really stepping into who I have always seen her to be as this powerhouse with this, her heart filled with love and integrity and I don't see Jennifer as somebody that's looking for fame or fortune through her walk in the world. I, you know, many of you might not know, but she, she does have an undercover day job as a paralegal. So everything that she's doing to, to create this experience for all of us to have is on her, you know, second half of her day or her extra time. And she's stepping in and you know, whether there's a little bit of fear or not, she's pushing through and, and we're all doing that right now. We're all being asked to do that right now. I know it. 
you know, when it hits me, I go, oh my gosh, here's another level we have to get through. And, but yet we do. And so I just want to thank each one of you for being here and holding that space for us to be a voice tonight. And with that, I'd really like to open it up for questions. If we have any questions for, for the topic tonight or what we're doing for the rest of the month or whatever, if anyone wants to share, I, I, I'm welcome to to do that unless you, Sheila or Jen, want to share any more before we go into our questions. Yeah, there was two things that I wanted to mention um, and kind of revisit. One of the things that you were talking about are um, is the fact that women are stepping into their power. And I think that one of the pivotal things that's occurring right now is people are here healing those primal wounds we are being able to talk about what's going on in our lives, what has gone on in our lives, how we're feeling about that, and we're being supported, we're being nurtured, and we're being uplifted by each other. And just as much as the women are embracing their masculinity, the men are also embracing their femininity. And I think that this time around, that's what this new energy is all about. It's about all of us coming to center, coming into balance. And the second thing that I wanted to mention uh, before we do open it up, um, and Jen, I do want to revisit uh, to see if you have any comments before we go to questions. But but I did want to ask Barbara, uh, Barbara Lamb, if you had any comments or were you aware of the disclosure aspect that occurred today? Honey, you're on mute. Let's, can you unmute? I was aware that it was going to happen, but um, I was too busy working, uh, <laughs> doing a regression. <laughs> and missed the whole thing. So I can't give any comments on it. Okay. But you know, we're, we're eking along, aren't we? We're eking along little bit by little bit in terms of the official disclosure. And in the meantime, thousands of us, probably millions of us, know the truth that these beings come in crafts. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's the beings who are the important aspect of this. And this never gets mentioned by any government that I know of, but, but we know, and we the people who have contact with them now and then, and so many people have inspiration from them, messages from them, uh, love from many of them, and I mean, this is the real truth, and I don't know if it will ever officially come out, but we know it. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. That that was so well said, and that really leads in to Jen, and what you're doing is bringing these Indigenous star teachings out. So do you have anything that you would like to share before we go to questions? Um, yeah, I do. Because <laughs> that topic about the women, you know, coming into their power. And two things on that. So over time, throughout conferences, Chief Golden Light Eagle, he would actually get up and he would say, it's time to listen to the women. And so he was doing his best to hold up women. Because we had been so suppressed and have been, you know, withholding our own selves, our own voice for a long time. And so another thing that he would exercise is what he would call instantaneous forgiveness. And so if you really wrap your head around that concept, it's, it's a lot hard. It's, it's easier said than, or easier said than done, right? Like instantly forgiving somebody. Oh, yeah. But we know the power of forgiveness, and we know that that's what really gets us to the other side of trauma. And so I bring that up because I feel like, you know, as women, we're, we're actually becoming more united. The, the programs of competition, the programs of jealousy, 
the programs of um, needing to be in control to feel safe are dissolving. And so I think that is really the catalyst that maybe um, you know, uplifting us as, um, you know, as women to come together and do this work together. And that's what I'm really seeing with Sunfire Fest is we have a really amazing team of really powerful women that hold the vision with me and are helping me to co-create this event. And so um, when we can give ourselves permission to forgive um, abuse or whatever it is you know we have the ability to do that and when we do that we're letting go of the cultural or um, you know that cultural trauma and we're actually able then to pick up our ancient medicine and so the the women are starting to connect more and more to their medicine to their ceremonies to their wisdom of creation you know, we are the creatrix. Mm -hmm. And so it's, to me, it's a, it all culminates together. And um, so that's just one more aspect of, of what makes this so amazing. <laughs> wow. So I wanted to share that. I appreciate the time. I really appreciate the opportunity be, to be here with you all and, and be part of this conversation. Huh. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead now, and if anyone has a direct question or comment about, okay, Susie? Well, uh, it was, uh, what I want to talk about is these live women on Zoom, and it's great, you know, it's convenient, we get to reach to the whole planet, but um, being able to go to that San Diego in-person function and you know, hug Sheila and meet, uh, you know, I, I, this was just amazing. Uh, um, being Gary Gilman was there, you make cuties, I hope I'm not forgetting anybody, but being able to meet physically and hug and hold some of these people you've been working with for, you know, Michelle, I, I wanted to know Michelle for a decade and I got to meet Michelle and I think one of my best parts of the whole conference was when Michelle and I were watching um, Adam Apollo being a DJ. I mean, it was just so cool. But yeah, this coming together, and because we, we are together, but physically when we come together, it really, really makes a good difference. Really nice stuff. Thank you. Beautiful. Well, I think Thank we lost Susie. <laughs> that was, she was so fun to dance with when Adam oh. Apollo was playing his set and that's a whole nother thing it's just you know you're with your you're you you're with your cosmic family you're with your soul family and it's just it's amazing i'm gonna i'm gonna mute because there's a lot of people walking by in the hall now so well if you have anyone else that has questions i would love to hear those as well yeah okay any questions or comments Okay, so if not, Jen, could you go ahead and repeat once more the dates and the web address, the location of the Sunfire Festival? Yeah, thank you so much. It's um, sunfirefest.com in August, the 25th through the 28th in Aztec, New Mexico. And also, if you're interested in learning more about what I'm talking about with the Star Knowledge teachings, I have a YouTube channel called Moons of Ascension that I actually go through um, kind of the monthly influences and talk a little bit about, you know, the star realms that we work with each particular moon cycle. Um, so it's kind of fun just to keep the information and the teachings flowing. That's Moons of Ascension on YouTube. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Michelle. Do you have any final comments? I want I want to thank I want to thank both of you. This is amazing. I can't believe we pulled it off, but of course we <laughs> did because you know, we're working in that in that spirit of flow, you know, and we're being open to living in the trust frequency that even though there was a lot happening all at once, I 
you know, just felt like if we trusted, we were going to make this happen. And seeing Barbara Lamb here, are you kidding me right now? Do you, all of you know who Barbara Lamb is? <laughs> oh my gosh. Barbara Lamb has been an amazing, amazing uh, teacher to me in terms of she has been working with so many people to help remember their, their star origins and their past lives. And I haven't done a regression with her yet, but gosh, I want wow. to. And just seeing you here, Barbara, I'm just so grateful. You're, you're, um, you're on mute right now, Barbara, but I don't I don't think she unmuted. Did, can you unmute her? I unmuted, but I lost there you are. the screen. There you are. There so you are. All I see is the word Zoom, but anyway, that's okay. Anyway, Michelle, I'm delighted to see you. Wonderful. And to hear you speak, it's just so wonderful, so heartfelt. Oh, like you have a huge, huge heart, and we need that so much in the world. Thank you so much, Barbara. I just love being here with all of you and feeling, you know, feeling that these last however many years we've been on this path for me, I had a very specific awakening in 2006. So since 2006, that's kind of like my marker for moving forward on this path of discovering who are we really, mm. you know, as, as these beings that we're called human beings, who are we and why are we here? And, and what is our purpose? And just being here with everyone makes me feel like we are contributing to the greater good for all. And that is why we're joining together on these calls. And I, I thank you, Barbara, for being here with us and holding impeccable space. And I can reflect back to you the same thing. You are a beacon of love and wisdom and compassion. And I, I'm so happy to see that you've been recognized at many of these gatherings, whether it's Portal to Ascension or whether it's Contact in the Desert or Conscious Life Expo, that that your work is being recognized in 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 this, you know, pioneering this getting the word out about our our past life memories with our star families. So I'm I'm so glad you're a part of this call tonight. It was a nice surprise. I didn't know that was going to happen. And just again, thanking everyone. I can't believe that here in California, it's seven little almost 10 after seven at night. I told my husband I thought I was going to be here just Thursday and Friday. And I thought I was going home <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> and something kept pulling me to stay and I, I he asked me yesterday are you coming home today and I said you know I don't get the sense that I am but I'll, I'll you know I'll definitely be there I know tomorrow's a work day I will help you with all these puppies that we have oh. and this morning I you know tuned in with him I called him first thing in the morning and you know I'll probably you know check out and head home and I told him I have this call to do. So I thought I would be doing it from home. But when the disclosure came out and everybody at this huge, beautiful hotel out here in the desert just said, oh my gosh, this is like, this is a big event that's happening. And we have a responsibility to talk about it. And look, we're all still here. These are the people that were guided to stay for Monday. You know, most people took off you know, on, on Sunday, but there was a core group of people that stayed. And a lot of them are pivotal people in this disclosure arena, like Steve Bassett. I don't know if you know who Steve Bassett is, but yeah. he's you know, he's a man that's been working on the citizen hearings and he works a lot in politics trying to get disclosure happening within the government. And a lot of a lot of his work has to do with, you know, once we get disclosure and we talk about some of these technologies that the government is not telling the rest of humanity that we may actually have solutions to the nuclear waste problem, which are star families they indicate by their presence being at all of these, you know, crash sites or being at all of these sites that we're getting a lot of information about UAPs, UFOs. Um, a lot of times they're around nuclear facilities. Yeah. There is a big movement. And I have been an activist about 
You know, I'm not debating with people that nuclear energy is, isn't clean energy. Every The science proves that it's clean energy, but what's not being addressed is that the waste is not clean and it's very dangerous to humanity and mother earth. And that's why our star families are going, hey, wait a minute. You have this beautiful planet you were placed on. Beautiful planet. We are so lucky to be on this beautiful jewel of a planet. Don't defile it. And this is what our indigenous family teaches us as well. So what what uh, Steve Bassett was talking with me about last night till two in the morning <laughs> was that there may be technologies that have, have come through through uh, uh, these crash sites and some of the information that we're getting that might help help us with this nuclear waste. There may be technology that we could be using to help us with this, this situation that our government's not addressing at all. They're not talking about it. They don't want us to know about it. And I don't want to go into any negativity or, or anger or fear or angst, but I think it's good for each one of us to be aware because that makes us good stewards of the earth. If we're aware and we could share forward with every one of our groups, some of the little nuggets of information that you know was we took in our hearts today and, and share it with our groups. I think that that would be a good thing for all of us moving forward to just keep sharing the information. That's how we will get through these, I call them crunchy times, you know, this these great pivotal times of change. So that's what I wanted to say, but I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I need to get on the road. <laughs> yes. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for being here. Jen, thank you so much for being here. Thanks to everyone out there for being here. We so appreciate it. Barbara, thank you so much for being here with it. I, you know, just lights up my night to be able to see you. So thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to everybody that comes out and watches us week after week and joins in the audience and shares all these beautiful questions and insights. Thank you so much. Um, so for right now, I wanna send you lots of love and namaste. Have a beautiful week, everyone. Love mm -hmm. to all. And bye bye. Yeah, bye. and keep Good up hug to everybody. Work, everybody. Thank Yay. you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you.